Thank you. Uh, so I present today a walk on retractions and common ground, which is a joint walk uh, among the Express project. And it owes a lot to uh, the work of one of our other invited speakers, uh, Laura Caponetto, because these are discussion that started in a reading group after uh, the reading of your paper. So, um, so yeah, uh, let's get started and um, Let's get started with an example of a witch faction. Um, Salome tells Albert, Patricia is coming soon, you should set the table. Salome is making an assertion and Salome is giving advice. Um, a few minutes later, Salome receives a phone call from Patricia and Salome says, um, sorry, I was wrong. Patricia might still be a while. Uh, Salome performed a retraction, the speech act whereby one undoes the effect of a previous utterance in a conversation. But now that deserves some, uh, so, yeah. Uh, so we note that throughout this talk, I use uh, an example of retracting an assertion, but one can retract a lot of different speech acts. One can retract order, questions, uh, promises, demands, and even proposals. We actually have an example like that. And um, so what does it mean to undo the effect of a previous utterance in a conversation? Um, that's what we are going to explore in this talk and um, try to solve a bit more to give a picture of how retractions behave with respect to the common ground of a conversation. Retractions pose uh, dilemmas that, um, that we do want to take seriously, that pose a dilemma of, uh, with respect to responsibility, and they pose a dilemma with respect to argumentation. Um, it's a dilemma of responsibility because on the one hand, retractions are necessary to guarantee that all speakers behave responsibly with respect to their commitments and assertion. When a speaker notices that one of her speech acts uh, was infelicitous, that an assertion was false, that uh, she wasn't licensed to uh, boss someone around, the good thing to do, the cooperative thing to do, the responsible thing to do, is to retract. Um, and on the uh, argumentative side, um, retractions are important because, uh, in a sense, um, a debate can be understood as trying to make your uh, interlocutor retract the claim to which you are opposing. So when you're trying to convince uh, your auditor to change their mind about something, you're trying to get them to retract uh, a claim. So on the other end, retractions are a problem because a speaker will retracts anything all the time. And we have some great political examples that we are uh, still not over, cannot be held to their commitments and disrupt argumentative conversation. We cannot actually speak with them. And um, therefore, um, retractions pose a problem in conversation. And that's why we want them to have some sort of a cost, uh, two kinds of costs. Um, first, that retraction have a cost to the retractor in the sense of losing face. When uh, a retractor is, uh, well, when a speaker is retracting a lot of claims, they will appear uh, less trustworthy and their audience will be um, less inclined to believe them. This is um, an aspect that we are not investigating too much at the moment, but we're uh, thinking about possible uh, directions in which, um, in which to analyze this cost of retraction to the retractor. The second cost, which is the most important uh, to us, is uh, the cost that retractions pose to a conversation. Uh, first, it's simply a processing cost. Um, a retraction needs some processing by the participants. Um, 
as we saw in our example, uh, Albert will need to go back in a belief he formed on the basis of Salome's assertion that Patricia was coming soon and he will need to cancel this belief. So this is extra work. And um, secondly, um, a retraction um, caused to a conversation that we lose some information um, because the state in which um, it is not known whether Patricia will come soon or not is strictly less informative than the state in which Patricia is known to come soon. So uh, we want to integrate this cost and we want to integrate some features of retraction that we, uh, that we discovered when discussing, uh, when discussing retractions. And these features um, are also introduced by a second example, uh, the example of retracting a proposal. I told you this was coming. Uh, actually, I do not want to marry. If you say that just a few days after the proposal, that's very sad, but everybody is going to get over it. Eventually, it's going to be fine. If you say that after a wedding, it's a bit too late. Um, and that leads us to some observations uh, on retraction. First, it seems that a retraction needs to be accepted by the participants in the conversation to be effective. Um, your spouse, when you try to retract your proposal after the wedding, will probably um, have a hard time accepting, accepting that you're not committed to your proposal anymore. Um, secondly, uh, a retraction appears to become less acceptable the more updates to the, com to the common ground depend on it. And this is a key feature that we want to investigate that. Um, so the wedding depends on a previous proposal and um, it seems that this further update, the wedding, uh, makes the retraction of a proposal unacceptable. And um, and that's linked to the third feature, which is that uh, a retraction of a speech act, the retraction of a proposal, does not cancel all the other speech act that depends uh, on the proposal or the speech act. Um, so we want to investigate the um, exact status of this speech act that happened between uh, a statement or a speech yeah, that happened between an original statement and its retraction. To do so, we will um, integrate, we integrate these features in a common ground account uh, of retractions. And uh, this is just our outline. So first, so that everybody is on the same page, I just go over uh, again on what exactly uh, retractions undo uh, when they undo a speech act. Then I, def I argue for um, I argue for analyzing a retraction as a proposal to update the common ground a certain way. I explain how a retraction uh, updates the common ground when it's accepted by all the participants, and then I show how uh, this account deals with some extra cases and considerations. Um, an utterance such as Patricia is coming soon, you should self set the table, has multiple effects in a traditional uh, Austinian picture. It has a locutionary effect, the act that is performed um, when saying something. So the fact that um, I uttered some words and uh, I made sounds and etc. It has an elocutionary effect, the act that is performed in saying something. So in saying Patricia is coming soon, you should set the table. Salome committed to a truth of a proposition, Patricia is coming soon, and she advised Albert to set the table. And then um, an utterance has a perlocutionary, uh, can have perlocutionary effects, so the act performed by saying something, the result uh, of the utterance. So uh, Salome convinced Albert to set the table and Albert uh, set the table. 
Now, what retractions and do is not going to be either the locutionary effect or the per locutionary effect. Uh, Retractions cannot go back in time and make it so that I never uttered the word Patricia is coming soon. And uh, retraction cannot uh, undo the fact that Albert got up and started to set the table. Uh, so what retractions undo are elocutionary effects. Um, the fact that Salome was committed to a proposition and the fact that uh, Salome was, uh, gave advice. There are two pictures of elocutionary effects. And here, I'm just going to pause for a second and thank Manfred very much because you articulated in your talk uh, what I was just, um, what I was uh, just gesturing vaguely at here. So thank you so much. And um, these two pictures are uh, the common ground picture of Stalnaker and the commitment picture of uh, Robert Brandon. So, in a common ground picture, uh, the information that participants agree upon is represented as a set of possible states of affairs. And with their utterances, speaker update this set of states. In a commitment picture, speakers utterances modify a normative structure of a conversation. And when they utter um, statements, speaker undergo certain commitment. So, um, and I think, and uh, Manfred wonderfully showed how, that these pictures are compatible because a normative structure is part of the information that underlies a conversation and because speakers are responsible and committed to the information they bring to a conversation and the way they modify the common ground. They should be it, accountable for it. So uh, that's why in this talk, I'm going to uh, tackle uh, the effect of retraction on two aspects uh, of, on two aspects, both the effect of retraction on previous commitment and the effect on retraction on a previous update to the common ground. Uh, that will become a bit clearer, I hope. Uh, and as an example, we see uh, two, uh, two ways of characterizing the elocutionary effects of assertion. So um, in a common ground uh, picture, an assertion has two effects. Uh, first, it performs a proposal to update the common ground with P. And then if the proposal is accepted, the participant update the common ground by removing the words that are not compatible with P. Um, in a commitment picture, uh, when a speaker asserts P, she immediately commits to P. So, and that can be uh, expressed in different ways. So she commits to the truth of P. She issues a warrant to the other participants to assert P and take her as an authority for P. And if challenged, she is ready to provide a justificatory procedure uh, for how she came to utter P. So then we have some, this picture of what retractions undo. So when Salome says, sorry, I was wrong, Patricia might be a while, um, what the retraction purports to do is twofold. So on the common ground, uh, what the retraction purports to do is to recover uh, the common ground of before it was updated. So recover a common ground that is compatible with Patricia not coming soon. And in a commitment uh, picture, uh, what a retraction aims to do is to remove Salome's normative commitments. So to remove the fact that she might be um, held responsible for the truth of the statement and that she might be asked to provide a justificatory procedure. This is an, a representation of the intended effect of uh, Salome's retraction on the common ground. So uh, here we have the common ground after her assertion that uh, Patricia comes soon. And uh, if a retraction works, then we should get back a common ground where Patricia is not coming soon as a possibility. I, I really love diagrams, so you're going to see a lot of them because uh, I love diagrams. 
And you will notice that uh, throughout um, this section, when I talk about the effect of retraction, I say what a retraction purports to do. And the reason is simple, is that we take retraction in the same way as assertions to be proposals to update the common ground. And that retractions um, do not update the common ground immediately. Why? So at first, uh, at first, I was pretty convinced that a retraction would have an immediate effect on conversation. And I had this great example um, of a parent telling their child, oh, you can have an, a pet octopus if you behave, and then retracting the promise. Oh, well, never mind. And um, here the speaker uh, attempts to cancel a commitment and a promise. And if the retraction were immediately effective, as I believed them, um, the commitment of the parent to a promise would be lifted immediately. And I came to this to Luca with this example, and I told him, "Yeah, this is a good example." And he told me, "No, it does not work this way. Uh, if you try to do that with my with my child, this is not going to fly." And uh, indeed, other participants uh, in a conversation can reject a retraction. Um, now, a little aside, um, when someone, when a retractor and an audience disagree on a retraction, so when there is the rejection of a retraction, this points to some very interesting problems, which I will try to outline a bit later, which are um, the social dynamics of common ground. Um, because in my parent-child example, it seems that since the parent has more authority, uh, than the child, they are more able to retract. Um, in a courtroom, courtroom example, in a trial, a judge is the one who decides whether a retraction is going to be accepted or rejected. Um, on the other end, uh, here I'm working on uh, idealized common ground where we think that uh, participants have uh, similar power. And um, so that um, so that a retraction can actually uh, be rejected. But yeah, so that uh, that goes a bit into uh, unknown territory for me, but very interesting one. Um, and I love how it points to us. Anyway, so the intended effect of rejecting a retraction is to hold the retractor to a previous commitment. The intended effect of a child who says, but you promised to their parent uh, is to force or to try to force the parent to uh, still uh, be committed to their promise. And um, it's also, uh, the intended effect can also be understood as trying to keep the information that the retractor introduced in the common ground. So, um, the fact that uh, there was a promise, uh, the child is trying to keep the promise of an oct a pet octopus in the common ground. And this is one of the reasons why we take a retraction to be a proposal to update the common ground in a certain way. Uh, first, this explains, a uh, this explains why a retraction has to be accepted by the participants to take effect. and. Um, at this point, I hope to have convinced you that the common ground is um, cooperatively um, cooperatively decided. And um, this has the philosophical advantage, which is great for us, that it puts retractions on par with other speech acts. So a retraction is the same as, well, works the same as an assertion or a rejection or a question in as much as it's a proposal was an update so that retraction is not this overpowered speech act that takes effect uh, uh, as soon as it's performed. Um, so now we have this picture of saying okay so retraction as a proposal of updating the common ground in a certain way and you're probably wondering well how do we update the common ground when the retraction is accepted? And, um, and we want to draw a picture of that. So the assertion example comes back. Uh, Salome tells Albert, Patricia is coming soon. Um, she asserts uh, P. 
Salome assertion has two effects. It has one immediate effect, which is that it performs a proposal to add the proposition, Patricia is coming soon to the common ground. And the secondary effect is that if the proposal is accepted, the participant update the common ground with uh, the asserted proposition. They update the common ground with P. Mm -hmm. and, that, and one thing that is uh, important to notice is that the common ground keeps track uh, in a Stalinagrian picture of proposals and updates that have been made. So it's a conversational record. Um, now, if you prefer, we could formalize this record in uh, Ala Lewis and um, and make it interact with the common ground in some way. Um, here we take it to be a part of the common ground. I don't think this makes that much difference. It's just the notion that um, when a conversation is happening, uh, the participants both uh, reduce the common ground by performing updates on the common ground and uh, add information and build up information by adding that um, by adding uh, one after the other the updates that have been performed and now we can with this uh, conversation with the help of the conversational record uh, describe the effect of retraction on a simplified common ground. So here I added for a bit of complexity, an extra proposition uh, R for uh, it is raining. Um, so when Salome uh, asserts Patricia is coming soon, she makes a proposal um, that goes on the record to add P, uh, to update the common ground with P. If a proposal is accepted, Albert has no reason to disbelieve that, uh, uh, to disbelieve that, and so we update the common ground with uh, P and we remove all the not P world. And now it might be a while before uh, Albert and Patricia, uh, well, sorry, it might be a while before Salome receives a phone call and the conversation with Albert might keep going and they might uh, also update the common ground with, it is raining. Oh. And then uh, Salome receives a phone call and she, uh, she says, oh, sorry, Patricia might be a while. So she, perform she proposes to retract a previous uh, assertion of P. Um, and what happens there? Uh, if a proposal is accepted, a proposal to retract uh, P is accepted, the participants go back to the update uh, that was made uh, of the common ground uh, with P, and they cancel the effect on the information of updating uh, with P. Um, but this is not enough for us, right? Remember that the common ground was also updated with the fact that it is raining. And so uh, an additional effect of the retraction is that after having canceled the previous update, the update with P, uh, the participants rerun the following update, the ones that happened in those uh, vertical dots, and they perform the updates that are still compatible um, with the common ground. Uh, given the retraction. And so here we have a um, plausible description of the two uh, essential effects of a retraction. First, a retraction performs a proposal to undo a previous update on the common ground. And secondly, so if it's accepted, the participant backtrack to the retracted utterance they cancel the elocutionary effects of the utterance and they run through the subsequent update to the common ground. And um, when they cancel the elocutionary effects uh, of the utterance, they cancel on the one end the update to the information that was performed, but on the other end, the commitments that were undertaken uh, by the speaker when making a utterance. So that's the picture we're going for. And um, 
it turns out uh, that uh, it fits very nicely with some uh, further cases that we were interested in. Um, so as I said, uh, the participant rerun the updates, uh, the following updates to the common ground, and uh, they perform them if they are compatible with the retraction. The question is what happens when a subsequent update uh, is incompatible with a retraction. And that's how we can analyze our first, uh, what our example of uh, retracting a proposal. Actually, I do not want to marry you when it happens after the wedding. Um, so this is, uh, this can be analyzed as there is a, a further update down the line, the wedding that is incompatible with retracting the proposal. The results of trying to do such a retraction are um, either that the retraction is rejected. Um, your spouse tells you that, um, well, we are still married, so you do not get to retract your proposal right now. Or, uh, and uh, well, it's a or, but it's actually the way out of this situation uh, would be that the speech act that depends on the retracted speech act, the wedding that depends on the proposal uh, you are trying to retract, have to be retracted beforehand, uh, so in reverse order. So first you have to um, obtain a divorce and then you have to retract your proposal. And um, so, so that was, uh, yeah. so that gives us a picture of some cases where, uh, um, where a retraction might, um, might fail. And so one thing important to notice is that by taking retraction to be uh, a proposal, we are not really giving, um, well, we are not really giving rules for retraction. We are giving more uh, rules of thumb of when a retraction is going to be accepted by your audience and when it's not going to be accepted. And um, some rule of thumbs correspond uh, a lot to our observation. So um, that a retraction seems to be accepted more easily when it's happening um, soon after the speech act it intends to retract is explainable because the speech act it intends to retract is still salient and there are not many uh, updates that uh, depend on it and there is not too much processing. On the other end, um, that a retraction is less acceptable um, if there is a lot uh, inging on uh, what was uh, what you are trying to retract. So um, if you are building a world philosophical system on an assumption and then try to retract your assumption, that's going to be more difficult. Um, is also understandable because um, that means that there is a lot of backtracking to be doing and that a lot of the subsequent updates are going to be incompatible with the retraction. So the participants, um, your audience will probably tell you that no, you should not retract that. Um, but what happens when we uh, disagree on retraction, when a retraction is rejected? Uh, and as I said earlier, um, when the speaker and the audience uh, disagree on um, whether a retraction should be accepted or not, that points to uh, very interesting issues to uh, of social dynamics in the common ground. So sometimes a retractor or a rejector is going to have the last word because she has more power over the conversation. And sometimes uh, the retractor and the rejector keep disagreeing. And I think here the only way I found to, uh, to understand this would be that the common ground breaks at this point and that uh, the retractor forms a copy, uh, CG prime, of the common ground where the retraction took effect, mm, while the rejector keeps a common ground where the retraction did not take effect. And uh, 
in this case, uh, dialogue becomes difficult and even in a lot of cases impossible um, between the retractor and the rejector. Um, and that, yeah, that gives us some uh, cool tools to analyze uh, some conversations. So, and here, that was a very short talk, I'm sorry. Um, well, so here we can conclude on some, um, uh, some features we delineate of retractions so that retractions are an update proposal. Um, this explains to us why retraction needs to be accepted to affect the common ground. And this is also uh, interesting in that it puts retraction on equal footing with other speech acts. Um, and then we explain how a retraction affects the common ground. Uh, first, it affects the common ground by adding to it that proposal to retract was made. And if accepted, um, the retraction uh, cancel the effects of a previous speech act while keeping the subsequent updates compatible with the retraction. And I think this picture uh, also illuminates quite a bit the cost uh, problem that I mentioned at the beginning. So if you recall, I mentioned that uh, retractions need to have some sort of a cost in the conversation to explain why we don't go around uh, retracting everything usually. And um, this cost um, is twofold. And first, the cost is some sort of a processing uh, cost because we can see that uh, going back on the conversational record and rerunning all the following updates takes time. It's costly for the participants in the conversation. and. Moreover, um, and moreover, we bring some light on what I, uh, what was the second cost, which was the cost of uh, information, and that's not as bad as uh, I made it out to be at the beginning, because um, as we see with this, um, with this way of uh, performing a retraction, uh, we notice that it's not the case that everything between the retracted speech act and the retraction was lost. Uh, to the contrary, um, most of what happened between the retracted speech act and the retraction was preserved. And that's uh, by the procedure of running through the um, subsequent updates that are compatible um, with the retraction. Mm. And finally, uh, so this analysis of retraction, uh, so as I've mentioned, uh, is very exciting to us because it points into a lot of directions. So uh, first, it does give some uh, interesting insights on uh, disagreement and um, in the way that um, a retractor and a rejector can uh, deeply disagree on whether a speech act is performed or not. And it gives some um, interesting direction in some uh, in the question of the social dynamics that govern uh, the common grounds because the um, because who gets to retract and who gets to reject a retraction are not innocent topics. Okay. Thank you, Leila.